Hi, this is Dennis at Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on a South Bend. It's a Gladding 840. It's a reel that was a competitor to the uh, Mitchell 300 of the day. Probably built this one in the 70s. I picked it up at a local flea market. Uh, I liked it because it was clean and the features uh, operated. The bell operates and the like. What I don't like about it is there's a certain grind in here. And I don't know if that's a matter of worn gears or just that it needs to be lubed up and cleaned. So I call these tuition reels. Uh, the price I pay for these reels is what it costs me to learn about them, see how they function, see what they're made of from a design standpoint, and see if they're uh, worth uh, uh, getting more of. So uh, it wasn't that expensive. We're going to take this one apart. I'll show you how it's made, show you how to service it, and. Um, Depending on whether those gears are okay, uh, maybe we put it back to, uh, to full use there. So we're going to start by taking out the side plate screws. There's three of them, and this is a, uh, a side plate that does not connect under the rotor. So uh, we can take these out without removing the rotor first. Uh, we'll do that. That'll release us and give us a look inside at the main gears. And I'm going to hold that side plate on, and I'm going to take the spool assembly off as well at this point, although I don't need to. And you'll notice that as I take the pieces and parts off, I'm putting them into a parts tray so I know where to locate these when I go to uh, to reinstall these. Okay, take the side plate off now. Let's see what we have. We have a, a clean wheel, just uh, as the outside would suggest. Looks like I have a lot of ri uh, dried grease. The uh, the teeth themselves appear to be okay. There looks like there's wear on these teeth, so that may be causing the grind. Uh, there is no lubrication for sure, so we'll go back and, and do that. And uh, right now the, the pinion gear looks okay as well. We'll take that off and look at it further uh, right now. So this gear uh, gear setup does not have a crosswind gear. It has a crosswind block that connects directly to the main gear, and uh, that crosswind gear or block makes the spool shaft go up and down. It rides on a little stud on the main gear and uh, we're going to take that assembly apart right now so that we can get a further look at this. So to do that there's a set screw that goes through that crosswind block and through the shaft, uh, the spool shaft and once you remove that screw and here's the hole that that screw sits in you can pull the shaft off. The shaft comes off and then you can take the crosswind block off to get a further look at that main gear. Now that main gear, uh, we, we can hear that grind going on in there, so it's going to be limited to the, the pinion gear and that main gear. Uh, so let's take the rotor off. Now the rotor has a nut up top here that holds the, um, the pinion gear in place, but it doesn't have to be taken off that way. There's a little through clip on the bottom here. It's a C-clip that slides on top of that um, assembly and if you grab that you can take the whole rotor and spool gear off at once. You just have to be a little bit patient. It's just kind of wedged in there. And it's, this is not an uncommon setup for reels. That's the little uh, C-clip that we've got and then you can pull that whole rotor out. So there's nothing going on under here. There's no bearings in this reel. Uh, this is the ramp that would set the bale and uh, then the other assembly. So uh, I'm going to try and take this handle off. This has got a pin. Again, not too uncommon. It's not screwed in. So if you find a reel that has a pin like that, generally you can knock the pin through and remove the handle and then get to the main gear. So let's see if we can do that right now. I'm going to put this over on a vise. It's probably going to be off camera, but it's easier for me to work that way. Okay. Continuing with that, then we have the pin partially out. It was just, uh, it's hammered in there, so uh, just be careful, but you have to hit it out. And to do that, you can use a punch, and then that can remove the handle. You can then take the little 
washer off that and you can push the main gear through which is what I'm doing now. I want to make sure that we get all of this uh, done properly here. We have a bushing on the back of this. Uh, actually we have a washer, not a bushing. Okay, and I'm feeling a little bit of grit in there. You can probably see it on the one hand. Now generally I like to wear a glove to keep this stuff off my hands. Unfortunately it doesn't work on my, on my, uh, my dominant hand that I have to use. And so there's some metal filings going on here, which kind of tells me that this noise that we're hearing probably is worn down off of that gear and it just settled in the back end of the shaft. We'll do our best to clean this up and uh, relube this and try and minimize any future uh, wear from that. And that probably happened because this reel probably was not maintained, even though it looks nice. Uh, all this grease is dried and it, it's certainly aged. So the... Uh, it will take its toll if you don't have that grease the grind starts to occur and it starts to wear down parts and that's probably what's happened here but let's do our, our best to put it back the way it was and uh, we'll see where it takes us from there so I'm going to use a blue grease for the shaft of the, the main gear here this is the anti-reverse ratchet and when I install and uninstall on these types of reels I want to make sure that my anti-reverse dog is off because uh, it makes it easier to reset the gear if it's on then you got to kind of play around with this and try and get that to match up with the anti-reverse teeth in the back here uh, just easier ways to do that okay so then we'll put that washer back on I push down some of the blue grease so let's go put a little bit more of that blue grease up top That blue grease is a Penn Universal Reels grease, and uh, it, uh, it serves many masters. It doesn't have to be a Penn Reel. And uh, if, you, uh, if you are rebuilding reels, I tell all of my customers and, and those that ask, if you are rebuilding the reel, make sure that you use a real grease and not, a, uh, not anything else, not a Vaseline, which I've seen in some reels, not a, uh, a motor or an automotive type of a grease. Make sure it is the... Uh, I'm just Those of you that know me know I have a little bit of trouble with small parts and I'm having that right now. Trying to align the pin here. It'll be momentary. So the, uh, the reel is is not... Uh, uh, an uncommon technology for the lesser cost reels of the time. It is uh, one that, uh, if properly maintained, will do what it's supposed to do, and uh, that is reeling smaller fish. Uh, it's not designed for uh, maybe the, the most uh, dominant type of, uh, of work here. But it does have a lot of applications that work well with this. So, okay, so we've got the handle back on. It's turning freely. Let's go ahead and lube the, the teeth on this gear. Again, that seems like where the biggest culprit is on this one is that it just hasn't had the, the lubrication in too long, and it's probably grounded down. And again, if we can't get it out, then, like I said, this this reel to me is a cost of tuition just to find out how it's made and I also like to see why reels fail from time to time and uh, this could very well be that it failed because of the lack of lubrication so uh, no big loss and lessons learned if, uh, if we don't get that uh, grind out of it and the cross block cross wind block goes on that stud and we make sure that that's lubed well this is a one piece uh, rotor it has a um, spool gear attached to it. You could take that off if needed, uh, but it's not needed. There's no bearings or anything in there that would impede or need to be serviced. I'm just going to do the same thing here. I made sure it's clean. These teeth look a little worn too. I uh, probably would tell you that the, uh, the metal that they're using in this is not, uh, not the highest quality, but uh, regardless. We'll, uh, we'll get this back in. There we go. And then we want to grab the C clip that we had and we'll just go back and reinstall that up top here.
and there's a little groove that it rides in this one's right there we go I got it now so that goes back in now we'll go reset that uh, spool shaft now we, we need to line this up this is a circular shaft here either side works with the uh, the alignment so we want to make sure that we align the screw hole and find that little set screw that goes in here hopefully we don't go through my small small pieces and parts issue uh, we got it this time I'm going to put a little bit more blue grease on the spool shaft turn it to make sure that it's working yeah we, we still have a little bit of a grind but not as badly as it was so we've taken some of that out which is kind of the purpose of what we wanted to find out here we're going to put the three screws in before we go up top to the spool and we're going to just check the drags on the, the reel as well so i would say this was a competitor to the mitchell 300 my guess is it cost a few dollars less than that the engineering is not unusual for the time uh, it did eliminate a crosswind gear and attach that crosswind uh, spool shaft uh, right to the main gear. Uh, there are no bearings in it, so it is a lower end reel, but it works. And there's a lot to be said when these things uh, last the time that they did. So this is a survivor. It's been out there. Um, yeah, we, we still have that grind. So so my guess on this reel is that uh, the lack of lubrication caused the um, those gears to wear. I felt it. You saw it on my fingers with the, uh, the metal shavings. And uh, at this part, one, if the parts were available, uh, the parts would probably cost too much for the value of the reel. And uh, my guess is that they're not available at all. Okay, so we're just going to take these apart. This is the drag system. That's a fairly un uh, un fairly common one for the, the space. I'm just going to clean up. There is a lot of dirt in, in this, and then dirt will impede the performance of a, a drag system. So let's get that out of there. There's a little metal shim that went in first, and now we have a Teflon washer here. Teflon washers just need to be cleaned off, and I'm going to use steel wool on this one because there is some accumulated dry grease on this. There we go. Now we're making it look more like it should. Then there was an eared washer. Just want to make sure that's clean, and it is. And it's important to remember the sequence that you're taking these things off in. So in my case, this was fairly easy because I had uh, noted it mentally, but if you're working on a reel like this, you don't know the reel, uh, take pictures along the way, use your cell phone camera, use a, a digital camera, uh, whatever is convenient for you, just to take the pictures so that you know when you disassemble how they go back from an assembly standpoint, and that'll go a long way to helping you get the reels done properly. In some cases, you can find real schematics are available online. That's the best situation to be in. And uh, if you find that, then you can pull that and it'll give you the exploded view of the uh, reel itself. So we've just done the drag service. No uh, oil is required on Teflon drags. And uh, just buttoning this up. And I'm sure I'm going to hear that noise again. That's one gears. Yeah, we still have that grind going on in there. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the reel can't reel and that a kid couldn't enjoy this. And that's probably where this reel is destined. I'll go find somebody who uh, wants to do some f freshwater or bay fishing and um, make, put a smile on somebody's face and let them use this reel uh, now that it's all lubed up and ready to go. So I encourage you to find flea market reels, uh, take them apart, see how they're made. Uh, limited investment, limited risk in terms of losing something and a uh, lifetime of experience gained from doing something like this. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. Again, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.